Good morning, Shocker Nation, and welcome to our first weekly briefing for 2019. I'm Kevin Harrison, Community Engagement Coordinator for the Division of Diversity and Community Engagement. These weekly briefings are held in an effort to keep the campus and public better informed of the changes occurring at Wichita State. Following a university update and today's featured topic, there will be time for questions. Today, we're pleased to start the briefing off with our featured speaker, Dr. Elizabeth King, President and CEO of the WSU Foundation, who is here to announce this year's Linwood Sexton Endowed Scholarship recipient. The scholarship is an annual full ride geared toward minority students majoring in business or education. It was established in 1994 to honor Linwood Sexton's legacy as an outstanding athlete, shocker, and community leader. The scholarship is a prime example of the university's commitment to empowering students from all backgrounds to achieve their educational, professional, and personal, personal dreams. At this time, let's have a round of applause for Dr. Elizabeth King as she comes to the podium. Thank you, Kevin, and I wish I had that radio voice, and I don't, but I felt like, wow, he sounds so good. Well, good morning, and it is my pleasure to be here today for this very, very special announcement. As uh, Kevin said, this is a four-year full-ride scholarship, so tuition and fees, and housing in the wonderful Shocker Hall, and even books. So the intention of this scholarship was to create an opportunity for a student to come here and not worry about the financial responsibility, but truly become engaged in all that it means to be a shocker. But let me first tell you about the Linwood Sexton Scholarship. Now, it was started in 1994, as Kevin said, but it was not endowed until the year 2000 when a gentleman who is also a Wichita State graduate had such enormous admiration for Linwood that he decided to engage in a fundraising campaign to fully endow this scholarship. And there were literally hundreds of individuals who contributed, but Jim Mann himself is the one who gave the largest contribution. So Linwood was a Wichita State legend in football. He was a member of the Shocker Sports Hall of Fame and the Kansas Sports Hall of Fame. He was a tireless advocate for equal opportunity and social justice and was honored with many awards for his efforts to promote understanding and respect among people of different racial, religious, and ethnic backgrounds. Linwood passed away at the age of 90 in the year 2017, but his legacy now lives on through the Linwood Sexton Scholarship. And I will tell you, I have worked with hundreds and thousands of, of alumni during my time here. I was here when this scholarship was created and here when it was endowed. And there is no one today or before today finer than Linwood Sexton. He was admired by all, respected by all, and he had a story to tell, but he always did so with grace and dignity. And this is one of our finest scholarships and what a great honor it is for you. Before I introduce members of the um, selection committee, let me introduce two of the very special people in this room tied to the scholarship, and that is Linwood's son, Dr. Eric Sexton. Eric, if you'd stand, and his wife, Kathy Sexton. Kathy. Uh, Eric served this university as a graduate um, in, in multiple ways, but then also 26 years with Wichita State University, and he's been a colleague of mine for many, many years. Appreciate you, Eric. All right, joining Eric on the selection committee, if you are here, either wave if you're standing or stand, please. Um, Alexis Scott, admissions representative and diversity recruitment coordinator in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions. Alicia Sanchez, director of the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. Andrew Myers, I've not seen Andrew. All right, with the College of Applied Studies, I have seen Shilu Surrender, Director of Financial Aid and Scholarship, Shilu. <laughs> and then we also have Joan Atkinson, um, Assistant to the Dean of the Barton School. So Bryant, would you come forward and I'm gonna tell just a little bit about you. This is Bryant Lewis. It's a big step, Bryant. I told you it's a big step. 
So Brian is a senior at Olathe East High School in Overland Park, Kansas. He plans to major in business management. He is a first stand violist at the Olathe East Orchestra, and this is an honor that he has had since he was a freshman, and that is very unusual, so congratulations in that. He is involved in the Hawk Leaders Program, helping students successfully transition into high school from middle school. He serves as a student ambassador for his high school, providing tours and answering questions from new students and their families. And I was telling him we have a wonderful student ambassador program here at WSU, and we will really look forward to having you do that with us. So he does all of this while working 30 hours a week at the AMC Theater, where he has been promoted multiple times, and he is now the assistant manager. So if you want tips on the latest movies, he is also, <laughs> he, is, he is your guy. Um, Eric and Kathy, if you would join us over here, at, we are going to give him a certificate, and then we'll hear from Brian. So come over here, please. So you are now officially a shocker, so welcome, welcome. <laughs> and we will let you take this with you later, but congratulations. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I want to adjust this. I feel like I'm going to break it, but we're just going to keep it up there. All right. Thanks, everyone, for having me. I'm super excited to be here, and what an honor this is to be. So thank you, everyone, for coming and having me. Um, I still can't believe what has happened in the last few weeks, how much can change in your life in this a couple of weeks. I, I'm still in shock. I don't have words to express um, how honored I feel, how grateful I feel to have this opportunity. I just want to thank everyone involved, and thank you guys so much for being here. Um, so yeah, I've been planning to go to college for since like eighth grade. Um, I joined a college prep um, course um, in eighth grade, and then, since then I've just been dreaming of going to college um, since then. Um, but as you get closer to college, um, all the fun stuff starts to wear in, but also the, the numbers and the tuition starts to roll into, which is kind of the elephant in the room. And I just lay awake, and I'm just like, I don't know how I'm going to pay for this. It's it's insane how people can afford this, so I'm so grateful to have this. Um, growing up in a single family home, there's not a whole lot of income coming in, and so it's just, there's been a lot of sleepless nights thinking about how I'm gonna pay for this, so I'm so grateful to have this. Um, having the scholarship means just the absolute world for, for me. I have two sisters over there, um, so I mean, my mom being able to help them put through college without worrying about me is just phenomenal. So you guys are welcome. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah, I just wanted, <laughs> you guys wanted to shout out. There you go. Um, <laughs> so when looking at colleges, I, I wanted a, a home away from home. I wanted a place where I felt welcomed, where I felt wanted. And I feel like Wichita State is definitely the place for me. Um, I visited this place three times. Um, the very first time, everyone was super nice and super welcoming. And I thought everyone was faking because I could not believe how nice everyone was being to me. We're not that nice in Olathe, but <laughs> um, yeah. And so I visited this two other times and everyone was just as nice, just as welcoming. And I, I couldn't believe this, this place existed. And it's I can't believe I'm here and I'm super excited. That just means the world to me for this. Um, so yeah, that's all we're gonna say. Thank you, I wanna thank the Sexton family. I met you guys, you guys are lovely. Thank you so much. I, I came and put into words how grateful I am to be here in front of you guys and I, I'm just so thankful. So thank you everyone for coming and thank you for having me. <laughs> So Bryant mentioned his family, but I would like to at least acknowledge them. So we have Bryant's mother, please stand, and his grandmother, please stand. It take her too long to stand, and his two sisters, if you two would please stand. So, welcome all of you to. The 
your future has in store for you. So welcome, and I'll turn it back over to Kevin. All right, real quick before we get started, Brian, uh, can you stand up one more time and turn around for, for everyone to see you real quick? Can you stand up and turn around? I just wanted everybody to see your suit. In addition to being a fabulous, <laughs> in addition to being an outstanding student, he also has an amazing sense of style, as you can tell as well. <laughs> Let's give one more hand to Dr. King and to Brian. With the student referendum on infrastructure improvements set for March, we want to let you know that the Shock the Future website is now live at wichita.edu forward slash shock the future. That's wichita.edu forward slash shock the future. There you'll find an FAQ, videos about proposed improvements, ways you can have your voice heard, and more. In addition, our weekly briefings through the end of February will feature the deans of health professions, Fairmount College, University Libraries, Applied Studies and Engineering, as well as Dr. Rick Muma, Provost, on February 28th to share what the referendum means to their colleges and the entire student body. At this time, I'd like to share a brief video about that. Shock the Future campaign is a campus improvement initiative that you'll be asked to consider this spring in a referendum. I'd like to spend a few moments explaining why this is so important to you and the university. In my short time as provost, I have spoken to the deans numerous times about their quality of classrooms and labs. Based on their discussions with students and faculty, the deans identified significant needs for Henry and Hall, updated biology labs, clinical space improvements driven by accreditation requirements, centralized service space needed for all undergraduate and graduate students in a renovated Clinton Hall, a restroom in the library's 24-hour study space, and a new business building. Unfortunately, the state of Kansas does not fund capital improvement projects of this magnitude. This leaves us with raising funds through donations and borrowing money through a bond initiative. The latter requires a source of revenue to pay back the bond. This means using student fees, in this case raising fees for everyone by $6 per credit hour. To this point, we have raised almost $30 million in private donations towards the $50 million business building where space will be shared by all types of students. That's about as much as we think we can raise for the project, which is an incredible amount given our donor base. We now have an opportunity to borrow the additional $20 million needed to build the business building and another $18.5 million to make improvements in the core part of the university. Combining these projects into one bond issue also saves money compared to doing this in two stages. All the projects are scheduled to be completed within three years of the referendum passing, so many of you will enjoy the benefits of new and renovated spaces. For those graduating sooner, you'll be leaving a legacy for future shockers, just like your shocker alums did when they approved funding for the RSC renovation. Finally, the WSU Foundation is providing opportunities for faculty and staff to contribute to this project. And that includes me. If you have any further questions, message me on Twitter at WSU underscore provost or email me at provost at wichita.edu. Shockers, now's the time. Let's shock the future. All right, so like Dr. Muma said, let's shock the future, and we encourage everyone to do so. We also encourage you to visit the website, attend these briefings, ask questions, and learn more about the positive impact these improvements will make for current and future students. If you've been on campus recently, you may have noticed that there have been some uniformed Army personnel visiting Shocker Nation. Today, we're excited to announce that we're in the beginning stages of bringing ROTC to Wichita State. We look forward to the exciting new initiative and we'll, we'll announce further details as they unfurl. As the campus continues to develop, we're happy to announce that work on the next partnership building known as P3 and the new Crash Dynamics Lab is underway. Both will be located at 18th and Innovation Boulevard. Also, the Hyatt Place Hotel is scheduled to break ground this spring near 19th and Oliver. There are active negotiations with other retailers at Brayburn Square. Fuzzy's Taco is scheduled to open at Brayburn Square this August. Our newest living option, The Suites, will be open by the summer. And Wilkins Stadium is currently adding a landscape drainage area to handle a 100-year rainfall. 
We'll keep you updated on these developments and more when the details become available. With innovation at the center of everything that we do, we want to invite you to Wichita State's fourth annual Innovation Awards on January the 22nd. The Innovation Awards, hosted by WSU Ventures and WSU Strategic Initiatives, recognize students, faculty, staff, and partners who execute programs and initiatives that greatly impact achievement of the university's mission and vision. The event is from 3 to 4 p.m. in the Radican Student Service Center's Begg's Ballroom, and it's free and open to the public. In honor of the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the university will be closed on Monday, January the 21st. The university will also celebrate Dr. King with events on campus and through a citywide collaboration from today through January 24th. Capping off this series of events is the Office of Diversity and Inclusion's 11th annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Unity Commemoration at 5.30 p.m. Thursday, January 24th in the Radican Student Center Beggs Ballroom. Many of these events are free and we encourage everyone to attend. For a complete guide to this year's events, visit wichita.edu forward slash MLK. Again, that's wichita.edu forward slash MLK. And finally, we're happy to have Vice Mayor Jeff Bluebaugh on campus this morning and even happier to host the city's weekly briefing right here following the conclusion of the university briefing. A couple of topics he'll cover are the National Day of Racial Healing event on January 22nd and exciting new developments between Wichita Transit and Wichita State taking place later this month. At this time, I'll take any questions that you have on today's updates or any other questions that you may have. For questions I'm unable to answer, I'll ask Joe Kleinsaucer to follow up with you after this briefing, so make sure that we have your contact information so that he could do so. What questions might you have? Okay, well, in closing, and as always, let us be mindful of the vision and mission of Wichita State. But before doing so, it's only appropriate that we revisit Jefferson's Declaration of Independence words as shared by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in his I Have a Dream speech. Now, I say to you today, my friends, even though we face difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Our vision to be internationally recognized as the model for applied learning and research. Our mission to be an essential educational, cultural, and economic driver for Kansas and the greater public good. Thank you again for coming to today's briefing. The next one will be held at 10 a.m. Thursday, January 24th. But for now, let's welcome Vice Mayor Blue Bar to share exciting information from the city of Wichita. Good morning and thank you very much. Um, thank you to WSU for hosting this beautiful um, cam campus and it's so exciting to see so many great things happening here at WSU. I, I do want to recognize my colleague Councilmember Brandon Johnson, this is his district we're in, and he, he's very active up here in District 1 as well as the rest of the city. So thanks, Brandon, for attending this morning, and thanks for all you do for the city. So we have a couple of exciting announcements this morning to discuss and some amazing joint ventures. WSU is a tremendous community partner, and we're happy to work with them to support the needs of their students and their staff. I'd like to welcome up Transit Director Mike Tan, to discuss a new partnership to, to support transportation needs of the campus. Mike? Good morning, everyone. Um, I'd like to speak briefly about something that um, I know I speak for everyone at Wichita Transit. We are extremely honored that we have been able to forge this partnership and relationship with Wichita State. Uh, it's something that we've worked on and thought about for a while, and uh, we really feel that this is something that is going to benefit the university and the citizens of Wichita and the transit. Uh, this is just the beginning. This is just the infancy. Some of the things to, that are going to be brought to bear, um, the first of which being probably the most important, is that through this partnership, every student, faculty, and staff member that, is, that has a Wichita State 
identification badge will be able to access all of public transportation in the city of Wichita. All of the entire urbanized area of the city of Wichita. Besides that, we are actually creating a, a route that is going to, again, assist the students that live on campus and also the students that commute every day. Um, I'll copy what, what Bryant had said. Uh, college is not inexpensive. It is very expensive. And some of those costs are incurred in transportation. And our job in public transportation is to provide an economical way to get to and from school, to get from school to employment, for, to get from school to places of entertainment or uh, places of uh, to, to go shopping or just to enjoy what Wichita has. And that's the, one of the things that we see as a tremendous advantage of this um, relationship, whether it is staff or faculty or the students. The other, the other aspect of what we're going to do uh, is we're going to provide a connection on Friday and Saturday evening for students, if they so choose, to go and take, care, and take advantage of some of the things that are going on on a daily basis. But we'd like to be able to see opportunities for students to be able to access that area and be able to do it safely and under, under the control of the university from the standpoint of, of what we do and, wh and when we do it. Uh, I also, we also want to see that partnership between the citizens of Wichita to be able to use that same system to come to Wichita State and see what's here on campus. Take advantage of the things that are here and take in some of all these things that, that Wichita State is doing, both for the community and for the students that are here. And we're very, very proud to be part of that. And I'm hoping every year we're coming up. It's, exciting. it's an exciting time for us and we hope that that excitement exists for uh, Wichita State as the kids get back to school here very shortly. Thank you very much, Vice Mayor. All right, definitely some exciting news. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. And, and the council and I are focused on the transportation needs of our community and this is a strategic next step to increasing the robust transit services in our city. So we have a racial healing event, and our next topic will, will include the great community partners working together to benefit the community. On January 22nd, at the All Amer Mid-American All Indian Center, starting at 6 p.m., we are inviting the community to come together to increase understanding, communication, caring, and respect. This event will include musical performance, poetry readings, art, and cultural performances, as well as a great open dialogue. The city is proud to support this event. At this time, I'd like to welcome up LaShonda Garns, Community Development Manager with the Division of Diversity and Community Engagement. Good morning, LaShonda. Thank you, Vice Mayor Bluebog. We are excited to partner with the city of Wichita on this initiative of racial healing within our community. This initiative aligns with the aim that WSU has to be the home of acceptance and empowerment. It also aligns with the dynamic programming that we support throughout the year, which ranges from speakers, film showings, award ceremonies, cultural festivities, LGBTQA programming. These are all just small pieces of the dynamic diversity that we see on our campus on a daily basis. The Division of Diversity and Community Engagement also works daily to empower and mobilize our students and the community to promote safe and diverse experiences and the sharing of those experiences collectively. So we are excited to be a part of this effort. We are excited that the city has invited us to be a part of the community engagement effort to really grow the understanding, the communication, and the care and support of one another. This is a critical conversation for our community. We are excited about the partnership, and we look forward to the great progress we'll make as a partner in this effort. So thank you to Vice Mayor Bluebach, to Council Member Johnson for their leadership on this effort, and we look forward to the great work that we'll do together.
Thank you very much, LaShonda. A core pillar of the value of the City of Wichita organization is to support a dynamic and inclusive community. I want to thank all of the organizations who have put together these events, including the Mid-American All-Indian Center, the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, of the, and the Greater Wichita Ministerial League. With that, we'll take any questions. The question was the Friday and Saturday night. Uh, it, it is a uh, extension of the queue line. So the queue line extension will come up hillside and then circle the campus and then go back down hillside. So it's actually an extension of our current existing service on Douglas uh, to access and bring access up to here. So uh, it's going to be on Friday, Saturday from 8 p.m. to 1 a.m. Yes, sir. I have a question about the day of Rachel Hill. Okay. Uh, Rachel Hill takes place 365 days a week, but the day of the good start. Uh, I'm just curious what are the initiatives and what are, what are we planning on accomplishing from that day? So, the initial day, it's really about starting the conversation and making sure we have the space to be creative in talking about the issues that we face with racial healing. The other initiatives will be a growing partnership in us identifying how do we address this conversation, how do we have it in a safe place, and how do we be inclusive of all of the different experiences that have happened. So we are working with the city of Wichita to really design an activity and engagement opportunity that would allow us to hear from all diverse voices in very unique and positive ways. No, there, w there was a financial commitment from the university. This is a financial partnership. Um, I would probably leave that to, to WSU to explain the, the details of it with regards to that, how that's working out on their end. Any other questions? All right. Thank you guys very much, and everybody have a great rest of your week, and 